20 Aspects of Silvio Berlusconi's Life, Scandals, Corruption, and the Good and the Bad of His Tenure Silvio Berlusconi was one of those unique political figures whose life and legacy left an indelible mark on Italy. His passing on June 12, 2023, in Milan prompted a reflection on his media-driven foray into business and politics. Words like cynical, extravagant, elusive, and carefree are barely sufficient to describe Berlusconi's trajectory. As an entrepreneur, he became the wealthiest man in Italy, while as a leader, he presided over the Italian government from 2001 to 2006, overseeing the longest and most stable administration since 1953. He was a man haunted by his stature, using elevated heels to appear taller and obsessively addressing his aging through frequent cosmetic surgeries and hair transplants. Berlusconi stood out as the richest man in Italy and the most influential politician since the mid-20th century. Let's delve into his scandalous love life, which provided countless headlines in both mainstream and tabloid press. In this video, we will dedicate our attention to Silvio Berlusconi, the leader who served as Prime Minister of Italy for three terms, the powerful businessman, who gained control over the entire Italian television industry, and the man who propelled AC Milan to its most successful era as the club's owner. Before we delve deeper, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and activate notifications to stay up to date with our latest updates. Number 1 his family hailed from a middle-class background. Silvio Berlusconi was born in Milan on September 29, 1936, into a middle-class family. His father, Luigi Berlusconi, worked as a bank employee, and his mother, Rosa Bossi, was a homemaker. He had two younger siblings, Francesca, born in 1943 and passed away in 2009, and Paolo, born in 1949. After completing his secondary education at a Silesian school, Berlusconi obtained a law degree with honors from the University of Milan in 1961. His thesis focused on the legal aspects of the advertising industry. As the eldest child, Berlusconi was able to avoid compulsory military service in the Italian army while still attending the State University of Milan. He further honed his sales skills by earning a degree in marketing. Shortly thereafter, he embarked on his entrepreneurial career in the construction industry. Reports suggest that he obtained bank loans through his father. Berlusconi's first major breakthrough came when he opportunistically purchased a large plot of land near Milan's airport at a low price. Surprisingly, the flight paths changed, and Berlusconi commenced the construction of the Milano Dew neighborhood, through which he made his initial fortune. In 1974, he founded the local television channel Telemilano, followed by the national channel Connolly 5 four years later. Number 3, How did he amass his billions and build a business empire? Berlusconi established a fortune as a real estate developer in the late 1960s. He later gained prominence as a media mogul in the 1970s. Diversifying his interests, he founded the cable television company Telemilano and acquired two other Italian cable networks, which he incorporated into Fininvest, the newly formed family holding company, in 1978. Through Feening Belston, he bought significant stakes in several major European media companies and acquired AC Milan. Number 4 breaking the national monopoly of public television in Italy. Berlusconi became the first private entrepreneur to develop a network of national television channels in Italy, ending the monopoly held by the state-owned broadcaster. His stations achieved audience leadership, by featuring entertaining programs and contests. In the winter of 1983-1984, he purchased Italia 1 and Riti 4, establishing the influential duopoly of Fininvest. In 1985, he founded La Sainc in France, the first private free-to-air French television channel. However, the company failed to achieve the expected viewership and closed in 1992. In the French market, he also acquired stakes in Chile and Cinema 5. Number 5, 
He had a television production company that created adaptable programs for different countries. Berlusconi expanded his media network by acquiring the Spanish company Telecinco, famous for its adaptable program formats in various countries, for $276 million. As the owner of Italy's largest advertising company, he also acquired the Dutch production company Endemol, which sold programs adaptable to different countries. In the print media sector, he bought shares in Milan's newspaper Du Gionale in 1976 and later assumed the presidency of the Montadori Group, publisher of La Repubblica in Rome, as well as the weeklies L'Espresso, Panorama, and Epoca. He also acquired the video blog store chain Booster, a stake in Olivetti, and internet portals. Number 6, he bought AC Milan to connect with the people of Milan, and increase his media exposure. In 1986, Berlusconi purchased the AC Milan Football Club, one of the two major clubs in Milan alongside Inter Milan. He became one of the most influential presidents in the history of the team. Berlusconi recognized that football was an essential tool for media presence and communication with the public. Initially, there was controversy surrounding the club's fate in the hands of a businessman with no background in the football world. Number 7, he was the president of the best AC Milan in history. Silvio Berlusconi became the president of AC Milan during the club's golden era in Serie A. With the brilliant coach Arrigo Sacchi at the helm and extraordinary players like Franco Bersi, Mauro Tassetti, Paolo Maldini, Alessandro Costacurta, Carlo Ancelotti, and the Dutch trio Marco van Basten, Ruud Gullit, and Frank Rijkaard, AC Milan introduced a new style of football and won the UEFA Champions League, twice in 1989 and 1990, successfully defending the title in 1994. Berlusconi remained the president of the club until 2008, during which time AC Milan won two more Champions League trophies in 2003 and 2007. The 2003 Champions League victory was particularly satisfying for Berlusconi as his club defeated their city rivals, Juventus, in the first ever final between Italian teams and the first penalty shootout in the history of the Champions League. Number 8, he founded his party, Forza Italia, after the clean hands judicial process. Berlusconi entered politics as a member of the Italian Socialist Party led by Bettino Craxi. However, in 1992, the clean hands judicial process exposed a widespread network of political corruption involving major parties and leaders of the time, including Craxi himself. Seizing the opportunity in the favorable political climate, Berlusconi founded his party, Forza Italia, in January 1994. Number 9, his first government lasted only eight months. Forza Italia, with its blend of ideologies encompassing liberalism, conservative liberalism, and Christian democracy, propelled Berlusconi to power in 1994 as part of a coalition with other parties. However, his first government quickly fell when the Northern League, a far-right party led by Umberto Bossi, withdrew from the coalition in 1995. Over the course of six years, four prime ministers succeeded each other, with Romano Prodi's tenure as the longest, lasting 29 months between May 1996 and October 1998. Number 10, The Secret of Silvio Berlusconi's Success One of Berlusconi's greatest strengths was his communication skills, earning him the nickname the obscene Ronald Reagan. Despite a declining popularity throughout his career, many Italians defended and loved him with near-religious fervor. The secret to his success is both simple and complex. Berlusconi was a shrewd and enthusiastic man with an inexhaustible reserve of energy. He was one of the most successful salesmen of all time, if not the most successful. He was fortunate to have reached his entrepreneurial maturity during Italy's rapid economic growth, and Milan, the financial heart of the country, provided ample opportunities for an ambitious entrepreneur. Number 11, he benefited from the decline of ideological politics in the 1990s. 
Berlusconi also benefited from the profound political transformation taking place not only in Italy but throughout the Western world. His wealth was consolidated in the 1980s, and when he entered national politics in the early 1990s, the dynamics of power had become more pragmatic and less ideological. Nevertheless, it was still surprising how a man who wore obvious height increasing heels, had visible hair transplants, and struggled to conceal his various cosmetic procedures managed to become the richest and politically most powerful Italian without being a dictator or resorting to brutal tactics. Number 12, he presided over the longest government in Italy since 1953. Another reason for Berlusconi's success in Italian politics was that, amidst a sea of short-lived governments, he achieved the rare feat of governing for almost five consecutive years, from June 2001 to May 2006, in two consecutive terms. This extraordinarily long administration, by Italian standards after Benito Mussolini's fascist regime, was known as Berlusconi's first and second government. His tenure was the longest in Italy since World War II, with the exception of Alcide de Gosperi's eight consecutive terms between 1945 and 1953. During his second term as Prime Minister, Berlusconi directly controlled Mediaset's three channels and indirectly influenced the three state-owned Rai channels, representing 100% of terrestrial television broadcasts and 90% of the total. Number 13, he dismissed two journalists and a comedian from Rai. One of Berlusconi's controversial acts as Prime Minister was the dismissal of journalists Michel Santoro and Enzo Biaggi, as well as comedian Daniele Lutazzi, from the Italian public television broadcaster Rai. This incident, known as the Sofia Edict, took place on April 18, 2002, during a press conference in Sofia, Bulgaria, where Berlusconi was visiting. In a massive press gathering, Berlusconi criticized Lutazzi for his politically charged humor, comparing him to the Spanish comedian El Gran Wyoming. He also deemed the statements made by Biagi and Santoro on Rai as unacceptable, urging the network's executives to take action against them. Number 14, he never explicitly acknowledged Romano Prodi's victory in 2006. In the elections held on April 9, 2006, Berlusconi's Forza Italia party was defeated by a center-left coalition led by Romano Prodi. As the vote count progressed, Prodi's lead narrowed, and he declared victory on April 11. However, Berlusconi never explicitly acknowledged Prodi's victory, although such recognition is not a requirement under Italian electoral law. In January 2008, after serving only 20 months as Prime Minister, Prodi lost a confidence vote in the Senate, leading to new elections in April. Number 15, he dissolved Forza Italia, and founded the People of Freedom. During Prodi's government, Berlusconi's influence on Italian politics remained unabated. In November 2007, he dissolved Forza Italia, the party that had brought him to power, and announced the establishment of the People of Freedom, Il Popolo della Libertà. This new organization reaffirmed the old principle established by Giuseppe Tomasi di Lampedusa in his novel The Leopard, if we want things to stay as they are, things will have to change a bit. With a new coalition that maintained the same ideological profile as the dissolved party, Berlusconi laid the foundation for his third and final term as the head of the Italian government. Number 16, he enjoyed making cynical jokes about his alleged relationships. In 2009, a woman named Patrizia D'Addario claimed that she and other young women were paid to attend parties organized for the magnate. With his typical wry humor, Berlusconi highlighted the lack of excitement in such easy relationships, stating, I never understood where the satisfaction lies when you miss out on the pleasure of the conquest. Shortly after the Ruby scandal broke, Berlusconi publicly remarked, it is better to be passionate about beautiful girls than to be gay. In the 389-page indictment presented to the court in the Ruby case, the prosecution claimed that Berlusconi had paid the dancer and dozens of other women to participate in Boomer Boomer parties held at his private residence. Number 17, 
he was caught giving intimate advice to a girl. Berlusconi's offensive jokes often caused embarrassments at international gatherings. For instance, he once remarked that German Chancellor Angela Merkel's rear was not worth looking at. He also gave intimate advice related to sexuality to Patrizia D'Addario, who had secretly recorded the conversation using a hidden recorder under the table napkin. The recording circulated on YouTube. This incident occurred during breakfast with the young woman after a wild group night. However, his powerful aura often overshadowed his excesses. In 2011, when critics called for Berlusconi to step aside from politics, press editor Vittorio Feltri compared him to a king, saying, if you were in England, you wouldn't ask the Queen to step aside, would you? Number 18, received a lenient sentence. In June 2013, Berlusconi was initially sentenced to seven years in prison and a lifetime ban on holding public office for the Ruby case. A few weeks later, in August 2013, the Court of Cassation issued a final verdict reducing his sentence to four years for tax fraud in the Mediaset case. Ultimately, Berlusconi benefited from a one-year reduction in his prison sentence due to existing amnesty legislation. He was required to spend four hours per week at an elderly care center but was not subjected to house arrest. However, his freedom of movement was somewhat limited, as he could not leave Lombardy except to go to Rome, the capital of Italy, and his travels were restricted to Tuesdays and Thursdays, returning home by 11 p.m. He completed his sentence in March 2015 after further reductions were granted by the court. Number 19, who will inherit his fortune. At the time of his death, Forbes estimated Berlusconi's fortune at $6.8 billion, placing him at number 353 on the publication's billionaires list. His main heirs are his five children, who already held substantial share packages in the corporate empire he built. Number 20, Beyond Positive and Negative Opinions, Silvio Berlusconi was a man who made history. While his wealth may be easy to quantify, his legacy is more complex. Former Prime Minister Matteo Renzi summarized it by saying, Silvio Berlusconi, his story in this country, many loved him, many hated him. Today, everyone must recognize that his impact on political, economic, sports, and television life was unprecedented. European politics changed forever with Silvio, with his successes and mistakes. It may take a long time before another character with his peculiar profile emerges. We hope you found this video useful. If you have anything to add, please share it with us in the comments section. Like this video and share the link with your family and friends so that they too can learn more about the 20 aspects of Silvio Berlusconi's life, including scandals, corruption, the good, and the bad of his tenure. If you're new to our channel, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting, make sure to subscribe to our channel and give this video a like. We'll be back soon with more curiosities from history.